and a very warm welcome to our 2020 St George's course celebration. I'm Professor Jane Safel, the Deputy Principal for Education. Over the last few rather challenging months, I've really valued the opportunity to engage with so many students, be it personally or um, via the various video and uh, question and answer sessions we've held. And I think it's a real privilege to be able to share this moment with you today. Since we have had to postpone the graduation ceremony in the Barbican, uh, we wanted to mark your achievement with an opportunity for you to celebrate with your friends, with your family, and with all those who've supported you through these years. Um, we've invited a number of people connected with St George's or with the programme to contribute messages, which we'll be following shortly. And uh, there's also an opportunity for you to post messages of your own if you would like to. You've come through your final year at a truly extraordinary time. I, I don't think any of us are going to forget it, are we? Um, I'd like to offer my personal congratulations to you all, um, not least for the way that you've faced these many challenges of the last few months. And some of, our, of you I know have had to do this in really difficult circumstances. You've all shown real determination and commitment. And whether you have graduated or whether you have some uh, assessments to uh, finish first, uh, your achievement is immense. And I would like to offer all good wishes to you for your future and the paths that you take in your life beyond St George's. Um, and now I'm delighted to pass you on to our principal, Professor Jenny Hyam, for her to offer her congratulatory messages to you. So all the best from me and goodbye. Welcome everybody. Whether you're a recent student at St George's, family, friends and other supporters. It's lovely to see you. You are the 2020 cohort that will be inextricably linked forever with the COVID virus pandemic. And of course, one of the many memories that you'll have is the fact that this celebration is virtual and online. And I think probably quite far away from the type of celebrations that you thought you'd be having at this stage. We will in due course be back at the Barbican and formally graduating, and that's a day I love. I think the atmosphere is fantastic and it's a wonderful celebration and testimony to the hard work and achievement of you all. I have to say that a virtual celebration feels much more impersonal for me but also has the added advantage that I don't need to worry that my hat's going to fall off, which is always a bit of a tension in graduation ceremony. And I know some of the students say to me, one of their fears is tripping up along the stage. This end of term is going to be very different. And I think the thing that we underestimate in ourselves often is how hard it's been and how we've had to adapt to what are very unusual and stressful circumstances. You've done really brilliantly to show the focus and commitment needed to complete your studies. You've had to interact in a very different way with learning materials and also with the examination process. St George's is a very friendly community and that friendliness has been preserved and I hope that you've managed to have conversations in the virtual world, along with all the friends that you would have expected. And perhaps in due course, you'll also physically be able to meet. I'm really proud of all the contributions that everybody's made, whether it's through volunteering, through going early into practice, through helping their local community and supporting their families too diverse a range of things people have done to mention, but all of you have done well. Once you leave St George's, it's not the end of our relationship. You become an alumnus 
and I hope that we will be in touch for the long term. We'd love to know how you get on, your future progress. We also like to make connections between you and the next group and cohort of people who study at St George's. They find that your reflections and what happens next is of great interest and support. So I thank you in advance for that. So to conclude, many congratulations again. Before I sign off, I just want to introduce the next video which has been recorded by the Chancellor of the University of London. She doesn't normally do this, but it's a reflection of the COVID times in which we live. And so we're next going to hear from Her Royal Highness, the Princess Royal. Graduating students of 2020, congratulations on attaining your degree particularly given the circumstances in which you completed the last few months of your studies. Every student experience is unique, but I think everyone will remember 2020 as different. Whenever I attend University of London engagements, I'm constantly struck by the enthusiasm and energy that you display for your studies and the range and achievements of your non-academic activities. With the world facing challenges none of us could have envisaged a few short months ago, and at a pace that requires flexibility and innovation, the skills and knowledge that you have acquired while at university are needed now more than ever to help reshape the future for us all. Your institution will support you now and into the future in your endeavours. While you may be missing the formal graduation ceremony this year, I hope you will retain the friends, the experiences and the knowledge you gain during your studies. They will all be part of your foundation for the future. Once again, my congratulations and I wish you every success as you embark on the next stage of your lives. Graduating class of 2020. I have to be honest, I was really looking forward to this moment. I wanted to make sure that the speech this year was a lot more funny, a lot more inspiring, and I actually wanted to get a much better reaction from the audience. But as I sit here in my office, studio, bedroom, workspace, and everything else this place has been for the past few months, I realized that as I'm delivering this, that won't be possible, at least for now. So. For the rest of this, I'm going to pretend that every joke I've made is funny and that everything I've said, all of you are enjoying. Being a student has got so many challenges. Everyone thinks it's so easy, but they forget all of the different obstacles and hurdles you have to go through. They forget about the times when you say you will not submit another assignment last minute. And then surely enough, a few months down the road, you submit an assignment last minute and you regret not fulfilling your promise. They forget about the times when you have to make those executive decisions during exams of how many lectures you're going to miss versus how many nights of sleep you're going to miss. And you have to weigh up the pros and cons. Not easy to do. They forget about the strict financial discipline a student needs to pay their rent, pay their bills, get the chance to go out with their friends, and maybe in between get the chance to eat and drink a little bit as well with the limited student budget that they have. Again, it's not easy. Being a student really does have so many challenges and you, class of 2020, you not only overcame those challenges, but you managed to survive through one of the most difficult and challenging and unique circumstances and points in history that there has ever existed. At a time when there has been so much uncertainty so much going on in the political world and the way that we are reflecting and looking at things as a, as a society is changing, you have been able to get through all of that. Above everything else, I want you to remember and I want you to realize that I, the staff and lecturers and everyone else at the university and your family and friends are so proud of you and what you have achieved through these difficult times. Well done.
at a university like St. George's, you get the chance to work with so many different people from so many different backgrounds and with so many different career paths ahead. And you learn that what's important when working in a team is not to have this mentality that you are the best in the team, but being the best for the team. And this is a message that the current circumstances with the pandemic have made us realize all the more. And this lesson is so important moving ahead. During these times when you see people talk about burning bridges with our neighbors and building great big walls to stop people from coming in, I want you to remember the George's spirit and what we have learned so far moving forward onto the next chapters in our life, not just as professionals, but as leaders of change in our society. Now, I don't want to give the impression that all the difficult things in life and all the challenges are gone and over. I'm sorry, but this is just the start. But the difference is now, you have the tools, the skills, and the resilience to move forward and to be able to tackle them as you go through the different stages in your life. And what's better, you now have so many friends and family around you who have gone through this journey with you, who will support you and remember to use them for support and help. I want to finish by saying congratulations to every single one of you. You have shown great spirit and I'm so proud to be able to be your president this year. Thank you so much. Hello, it's John Hammond here, Head of Department of Rehabilitation Sciences in which the Occupational Therapy Programme sits. I'd like to begin by proudly welcoming you, our very first Occupational Therapy graduates of St George's University of London. I'd also like to welcome friends, family and significant others who might be joining you today on this momentous occasion, not only for you, but for us as a university. You are our pioneers, our leaders. That is never an easy path to take and you've demonstrated those leadership skills over the course that you've studied. And there's one example I'd like to share with you now. In your second year, you may recall that you took it upon yourselves to demonstrate those skills by sharing advice with your incoming first year colleagues. This was collated on a notice board outside the Art of Living Suite. We were so proud of the Art of Living Suite and of your work that when Suzanne Rastrich, Chief Allied Health Profession Officer for the NHS, came on a tour, we highlighted this to her. She was drawn to one piece of advice that stood out. I find alcohol helps. <laughs> After the initial embarrassed giggles, we acknowledged how humour was an important component of leadership. Joking aside, there were many other messages on that notice board that indicated self-awareness, adaptability, learning agility, encouragement and influence all important skills that I hope you to continue to develop and be the future leaders of the amazing occupational therapy career that you are now embarking. I'd now like to conclude by taking this opportunity to ask you to join me in thanking many of those people who've helped you to get to where you are now. Firstly, I'd like to thank Liz Treadwell, Catherine Gray and Ian Beath for bringing this course from inception to validation. Second, I'd like, to join, like you to join me in thanking those across the university, including the Student Centre, library staff, our technical officers, Terry and Juji, professional administrative support, Fred, Anne-Marie, Faye, and many others behind the scenes that have helped to support your course. I'd also like to thank the physiotherapy and rehabilitation academic staff for supporting the course as well as other team members. And finally, I hope you will raise your glasses to give a big thank you to the occupational therapy academic team. Catherine, Elizabeth, Sarah, Rosie and Kat. And of course, led by Jane. They've all done an amazing job in building the course and supporting you on that journey. I'd now like to hand over to Jane Cronin Davis, Professional Lead and Course Director for Occupational Therapy. Hello, my name is Dr Jane Cronin Davis and I have the pleasure of being the Programme Lead for Occupational Therapy at St George's University of London. 
I wonder how people are feeling today as we welcome you to this celebration of the huge achievements of our first ever cohort of occupational therapy graduates from St George's, our class of 2020. For me, this has been one of my own career defining moments. It's been a real privilege to work with you over the last three years. You have all been truly inspirational with your stories, the journeys you have taken and the challenges and opportunities you have embraced. Your adaptability, resilience and patience since lockdown hit us has been amazing and a testament to you as professionals. I feel very lucky to have been part of your three years at George's and you've all achieved so much. Sometimes it felt like a long journey in a small rocky boat and sometimes it was like being on a yacht sailing swiftly as times rushed past us especially the last few months where we've not been in the same physical environment, but thank goodness for the virtual environment we now have to inhabit. I'm now incredibly proud to call you my professional occupational therapy colleagues and friends. This is your time to rejoice with your own friends, families and loved ones. You made it and you've done extremely well. You're now a member of a truly amazing profession with great times ahead of you, I've no doubt. I'm really sorry we can't be together and have the celebration that we planned even from day one with you and your loved ones, but hopefully we can still do this at some point, so you need to keep in touch. I hope I can get to the end of this before getting too emotional, so it's time to get back on script. Be compassionate. We've seen this in all of you, to each other, to the people you've met and worked with on placement and to us. Please. Continue to be as compassionate, kind and true to our professional values and philosophy as occupational therapy. It's really important to do that. Somebody once said to me, Jane, have courage. We all know that we're in challenging times and that that may not change and we, and we need courage. And when this situation has abated, please continue to have the courage to advocate for your patients and service users. Speak up for yourselves and shout about the value of occupational therapy. You are our new ambassadors. So now embrace change whilst you're working. Don't be afraid to make the changes you think need to happen. Influence people, negotiate where necessary and take a professional stand wherever you can. Be clear about what you want to achieve and how you can do this. You now have the skills, knowledge and attitudes to accomplish. You are the St George's pioneers and will always be remembered as such. I hope you now have the commitment and confidence to succeed and take action. Set your aspirations and goals high and take every, every opportunity offered to you, because you never, never know where that's going to lead. Remember, knowledge is the basis of everything we do, so we must never stop learning and hope that you continue to do so in your professional careers and think about facilitating the learning of others. Think about being practice educators and how you might help educate the practice of the future, and I promise you this is not a plug for you to become practice educators. Muhammad Ali said, if you are not courageous enough to take risks, you will accomplish nothing in life. So take those risks, be brave, compassionate, kind, and most of all, believe in yourselves. Please keep in touch. We want to hear how you're doing, where you're going, and what you've achieved. I have no doubt you'll be fantastic occupational therapists and you will make a difference to lots of people and services. You will be very fortunate that you chose to work there. Thank you for what you've given us. Thank you for what you've given us as a course team, as individuals to the university and now to the occupational therapy. So finally, congratulations, class of 2020. Carpe diem, seize the day, view your new horizons and look forward to your futures. Be true to your own individuality, be inspirational, but have loads of fun whilst doing this. And finally, remember occupational therapists help and empower people to live the lives they want and you must do the same. Thank you. Hello class of 2020. Well done, you've completed your occupational therapy degree from St George's and we are so proud of you. Congratulations to you all, our pioneer cohort of occupational therapy students. Congratulations to our OT pioneers, we are so, so proud of you. Massive congratulations to you all, you lovely lot, our first OT graduates. Congratulations all of you for Getting through the last three years, it was hard work. I can't believe it's three years since you started. You've been a fantastic group to get to know. I personally feel so privileged to have been on this journey with you. It's been an absolute pleasure for me working with you over the last few years. 
and seeing you develop and grow into the fantastic occupational therapist that you've become. We're so proud of the hard work you've put in. I know you've worked really, really hard. Um, I was honoured to be able to teach you in your first year. It's been a real pleasure to know each of you and I feel really privileged to have been able to teach you. Good luck with your first jobs as occupational therapists. Well done. We wish you good luck with your future careers. Wishing you all the very best and a big congratulations. Congratulations, occupational therapists. Keep in touch. Let us know what you're up to. And again, congratulations. Wish you all the very best. Bye for now. I pledge myself and promise I will respect the learning and achievements of those professionals in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will apply to benefit humanity all measures which are required. I'll remember that there is an art to all professional endeavours and that warmth, compassion and understanding may equal any other intervention. I will not be ashamed to say, I know not, nor will I fail to call on my colleagues when the knowledge or skills of another are needed. I will respect the privacy of my fellow human beings, for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially, I must tread with care where others place their trust in me. I will relate my work to the human state, which may affect a person's family and economic stability. I will remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all human beings, including the most vulnerable and marginalised. I make this declaration solemnly, freely and in humility. So our celebration with you is coming to a close now. We want to reiterate our thanks to you, the class of 2020. You have done us all so proud. And as a team, we are so ple pleased to hear that many of you have already been offered jobs. This is such fantastic news. But we also want to express our gratitude to a few more people. There are lots who should be included. First and foremost, a huge thank you to the family, friends, and loved ones who have supported our graduates over the last few years. We know that this support will have been incredibly valuable and so appreciated. Secondly, the occupational therapy staff and the rehabilitation sciences teams who have worked so hard over the last three years to ensure that we really were providing the very best possible education to our students and of course to our busy and motivating practice educator colleagues. Thank you so much. Finally, my colleagues and I want to thank St. George's and the joint faculty with Kingston University for starting an occupational therapy program and enabling us to have our very first cohort of OT graduates and ambassadors for the university. Graduates, please be sure to upload your pledges to Flipgrid if you have not already done so. And also we want to see all or any of the personal or work celebrations you might share on your own social media. So if you could use the hashtag, hashtag proudly St. George's, it really is time to celebrate and enjoy your success and wishing you once again, our biggest congratulations.